I don't know how you did it, but somehow you've stumbled upon the easiest way to solve a Rubik's Cube. I've seen tutorials out there and they are great at solving Rubik's Cubes, but not so great at teaching someone else how to do it. I'll teach you slowly, step by step, so you don't get lost. I'll teach you like an eight-year-old, just like I taught my son, who is an eight-year-old. In learning the Rubik's Cube, an important part is knowing what side you're on. For instance, this is the yellow side. Why? Because the center square is yellow. If I turn over here, this is the, actually the orange side, because the center is orange. Here is the blue side, and so on. Also, I know that the other side of the cube back here is green, because green is opposite of blue. Look, there's the green side. So look at the chart here. We've got blue and green are cold colors. Those are opposites. Red and orange are hot colors, and white and yellow are daisy colors. So to prove that, here, look, here's orange. That means red's back here. There's the red. There's green. Where's the blue? The blue's right back here. And I know that without even looking. There's the blue. And of course, we've got the yellow and the white. So those are your opposite colors. This can come in handy. It could help you solve quicker when you're looking for a specific side. You can get to it really quick when you find the opposite color. First thing we're going to do is start with the yellow side up. You know what side the yellow side is because the middle is yellow. So this is the yellow side. It's facing up. And then it doesn't matter what side's facing forward, but we're going to focus on the top and the side facing us. But again, it doesn't really matter what side is facing you. I want you to imagine that this yellow square is a yellow house and a road goes all the way around this house. In fact, we can even spin the top and it's not going to change anything. Go ahead and do that. Hold the bottom two layers and spin the top because it's not going to change anything. We're still going to have a road going around it and the yellow is still in the center. So feel comfortable making that, that, making that spin. There's also a road that comes down right here. This is a road. And over here on the left, this is a road. The middle is a median, which nothing can drive in. So there's pretty much a road everywhere except for this median and, of course, the house. The goal is to get our cars parked around the house. Here, 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 and here. Once you do that, then you have completed this step. So what are these cars? A car is a white square, as long as it's not a corner piece. This is, is a car. But if I turned over here, um, this is also a car, this is a car, but this one's not. Why? Because it is a corner piece. All right, so let's park the cars. Is there a car available for us to park? Do you see a car? We're just going to look at this side and see if we can even find a car. Because our focus, again, is going to be the front of this and the top of this. Do we see a car? Yes, we do. It's right here. So let's drive him up. We know he belongs right here next to this house. So we simply can turn this side and park him where he belongs. Okay, I'm going to take him up just by turning like that. And now he is parked. Okay, now we've changed the cube a little bit by doing that. So double check, is there any cars here? Actually, yes, there is. Now there's another car available. But if I try driving him up, I call that crashing the cars. So we're going to have to move him out of the way. Again, I said to feel comfortable with spinning this top. So we can spin it. Now is there a spot available? Yes, there is, right here next to the house. So now we can drive this car up the road and park him in front of that yellow house. Now we have two cars parked. Again, we've changed the side, so let's look at it. I don't see any more cars. So now we're just going to look at another side. Still the yellow side is up, and we're just gonna check this side out. Do you see any cars? Yes, there's actually two cars, but they're in the median. So if, to get this one to come over here, we would need to turn the cube to reposition it. So we're going to turn it like so. And now this car can be driven up here. Except once again, we're going to crash into this car. Uh, we could turn it out of the way, but notice this other car, it has a free spot. We can do that. So let's drive him up to this spot. All right, and now we have a final car left, but again, he's still gonna crash into this car. What do we do? We spin the top. If we spun it this way, it wouldn't work because there's still a car in the way. If we kept going, we'd say, no, that doesn't work either. 
if I brought this up, it crashed into this car. Then we say, oh, here's the free spot. We can just drive him up into that location. And this is called the daisy. Once you solve the daisy, you've completed this step. If you can go from a scrambled cube to the daisy in under one minute, then you're ready for step two. You just go to easiestsolve.com and click on step two. You may run into a situation where you can't find your car. If you look right here, there's no car. Just the, there's a white corner piece that doesn't count as a car. Here we go, no car, just a white corner piece. No car, white corner piece, no car. So where's the car? The car is on the bottom of the cube. That's where it's hiding. The car's right here. Of course, the middle white is not a car, and this corner white's not a car, but this one right here is a car. So how do we get it from, to go from the bottom all the way to the top of the cube? When they're on the, on the bottom, it actually makes things easier because all you have to do is line up this blank parking spot to where that car is. So let's find him. There's the car. I'm just going to put my finger on it so we don't lose it. So the car is right here. And we're going to spin the top here so that the parking spot, this is the empty parking spot, is now above where the car is. The car's right here. I'm touching it with my finger. My thumb is up here on the blank parking spot. And I'm simply going to do a 180 flip by changing the position of my thumb and finger like that. And it'll bring it to the top. And so we teleported that car up to the top really easily. So if you're always finding them on the bottom, that actually speeds things up because it's real easy to bring the parking spot over the car and then just flip it. In trying to solve the daisy, you may run into a situation where the car is at the top of the median. And I, just like I just showed, all you have to do is turn it. It doesn't really matter which way. It can be on the right, it can be on the left. Just get it off that median and get it onto the road. So in this case, I'm just going to go left. And now it can be driven up. But again, there's a car here. So we're just going to spin the cube the top till we get to a free spot. Now I can drive that up where it goes. If the car is at the bottom of the median, again, you just turn it. You turn it till he's on the road. Doesn't matter if it's right or left. We can turn it to the right in this case. If we want to, doesn't matter. We can go left if we wanted to. Then we just drive him up. We don't want him to crash, so we turn it. There's a free spot. The car will drive there. If you can go from a scrambled cube all the way to the daisy in under one minute, then you're ready to go to the next step. Go to easiestsolve.com and click on step two.